carbon flows between each reservoir in an exchange called the carbon cycle which has a slow and a fast component that is any change in this cycle that shifts carbon from one of the reservoirs and puts it into another reservoir is a part of the carbon cycle the global carbon cycle is now usually divided into the following major reservoirs of carbon interconnected by pathways of exchange that is carbon can exist in one of these reservoirs that we are talking about it can exist in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide or it can exist in the terrestrial biosphere that is we are talking about all living organisms me you plants and everything else carbon will exist inside there it can exist in the oceans including the dissolved inorganic carbon and living and non living marine biota also contain carbon it can exist as sediments under the surface of the earth including the fossil fuels that also contain carbon and one more important source of carbon is the earth's interior carbon from the earth's crust and the earth's mantle can is also one of the reservoirs of carbon now let's look at how carbon basically moves from one reservoir to another these carbon stores interact with other components through the geological processes the carbon exchange between reservoirs occurs as a result of various chemical physical geological and biological processes The ocean contains the largest active pool of carbon near the surface of the earth. The natural flows of carbon between the atmosphere, ocean and sediments is fairly balanced so that the carbon levels would roughly be stable without a lot of human influence. As already discussed, the carbon cycle has two components to it. One is the fast component where the recycling happens really fast. and two is the slow component and let's look at the slower component of the carbon cycle first getting into the slow carbon cycle through a series of chemical reactions and tectonic activities when i talk about tectonic activities i am talking about the earth's plates moving carbon takes between 100 to 200 million years to move between rock soil ocean and atmosphere in the slow carbon cycle the movement of carbon from the atmosphere to the lithosphere or the rocks begins with rain the atmospheric carbon combines with water to form a weak acid which is carbonic acid that falls to the surface in rain the acid dissolves rocks a process known as chemical weathering and releases calcium magnesium potassium and sodium ions rivers carry these ions to the ocean in the ocean the calcium ions combined with the bicarbonate ions to form calcium carbonate the active ingredient in a lot of antacids and the chalky white that you know of in the ocean most of the calcium carbonate is made by shell building organisms and such organisms are known as calcifying organisms such as corals and planktons after the organism dies they sink to the sea floor over time the layers of shell and sediments are cemented together and they turn to rock storing the carbon in stone that is as limestone and its derivatives only 80% of the carbon containing rock is currently made this way the remaining 20% contain carbon from living things that's organic carbon that have been embedded in layers of mud heat and pressure compress the mud and carbon over millions of years forming sedimentary rocks such as shale in special cases when dead plant matter builds up faster than it can decay layers of organic carbon become oil coal or natural gas instead of sedimentary rock like shale the slow carbon cycle returns carbon to the atmosphere through volcanoes earth's land and ocean surfaces sit on several moving uh, crustal plates When the plates collide, one sinks beneath the other and the rock it carries melts under extreme heat and pressure. The heated rock recombines into silicate material releasing carbon dioxide. When volcanoes erupt, they vent the gas to the atmosphere and cover the land with fresh silicate rock to begin the cycle again.